Welcome to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Badass Direct Sales Mastery is a podcast for rock star direct sales moms who are determined to make their business kick ass. Jenny will share her knowledge of effective sales and recruiting techniques, tips to get what you want from your business, and will interview direct sales professionals and leaders from various companies. The interviews will give insight to how these rock stars got to where they are and where they plan to grow in the future. And now, the direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Welcome back to another episode of Badass Direct Sales Mastery. I'm your host, your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger, helping you whip your business into shape. And I, y'all know this doesn't happen very often, but we have one of our previous guests back because she and I were chatting and I found out that not only does she have a book, but she's also in our industry. She's in direct sales. She's in network marketing, y'all. And she has been for over a decade, almost two decades of experience. And I went, girl, we need to have you back and have you talk about this. So let me reintroduce you to Stacy Hall. She has extensive experience as a podcast host and guest, obviously, because y'all can go back and re-listen to her episode. But not only that, she is a featured columnist in the Network Marketing Magazine. Her thought pieces have also appeared in Authority Magazine, Sales and Marketing Management Magazine, CEO World Magazine, and she is spotlighted on the National Association of Sales Professionals website. Y'all, are you ready to hear from her? Because holy crap. So Stacy Hall is also the power of her number one, or she's the author of the number one selling book, Selling from Your Comfort Zone. The Power of Alignment Marketing, which is what we talked about last time she was here. So if you want more about that, go listen to that episode. But today I'm talking to Stacy about direct sales and network marketing. So Stacy, welcome back to Badass Direct Sales Mastery. Jenny, I have been so thrilled since you invited me back. I could not wait to get into your studio. I always have the best time with you. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much. So, Stacy, you have a long history of network marketing and direct sales and multi-level marketing with a few different companies. But tell me, tell us, how did you get started in the industry? Because that's always such an interesting story for me. Well, I was a hard nut to crack. Let's put it that way, <laughs> because my background has been sales training for quite a long time, predates mm predates my network marketing experience. And I had the philosophy, the belief that if I aligned with one company, then people in other companies wouldn't hire me, right? To speak to their group. So I thought it would hurt my business. I never was against, I'm not one of those people, you know, who, but network marketing, I would never do it. It was a completely different, we'll say a protection mechanism to protect mm. my coaching business. So what happened is, I had gotten extremely unwell, oh. physically unwell, for a variety of reasons that too long to go into. Mm -hmm. And I relinquished the shares of the company I started to a business partner I brought in. And I went home to heal for, as it turned out, two years and three months. I didn't know that was going to take that long, but that's how long it took. And I know that because I know a month and the year that things changed for me. So I had a friend who was involved with massage therapy. Okay. She owned um, she owned a, a massage spa. She would bring in continuing education teachers for massage therapists. And she brought in, I won't tell you what the pro type of product was because it would become very obvious. Right. So anyway, she brought in some teachers who were teaching a modality using a particular type of product. Oh, okay. In the health and wellness world, obviously. Sure. And she, out of pity, invited me, like she cared about me, to come. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'm not a massage therapist. I know, just come. I, It's an eight-hour class. I've not been out of bed longer than an hour. I know, come for an hour. Anyways, got there, and I had an immediate experience of 
coming back alive. Wow. They just, I mean, I used, I used something and in minutes I had come back to a feeling of myself. Wow. And I then begged, and, and I'm sure we'll get into this later, so I, I'll <laughs> save the, the, the story for later. But I did actually beg to be able to buy one of the products they were using there, like the sampler. Right. And take it home because I knew that if I'd started using it right away, it would probably have a lasting effect, which it did. And I've been with the company for 17 years and I order multiple times a month, every month. And yes, I have a very large team. Okay. And most of them are customers, not business builders at this point. It, um, yeah, that's how I got involved. Oh my gosh. So I, I love hearing those kinds of stories because what I often find and we're now at over 270 episodes by the time this is coming out. And that means I've done about 200-ish interviews. And a lot of them have been with network marketers. And I find it so funny that sometimes the most stringent people saying, I can't do this or I won't do this for whatever reason, right? You had, your, as you called it, your protection mechanism for your sales training business that you didn't want that to interfere with that. And yet, encountering a product that had a result, a an outcome that was so powerful that to become a customer and then to go, oh my God, I have to be a part of this because I'm guessing you had a moment of, who am I to hold this powerful result from other people? And I was very selfish in the initial moment. That said, uh-huh. all through the two years of doing my best to get well, yeah. I had pray I do pray every day and I had begged God I said if you help me heal my body and my heart I promise you whatever works for me I will go teach to others. So I had been saying that all along in mm-hmm. the moment I am going to be honest I was in a selfish place I need this to be able to get out of bed and it yeah. did 3 days later mm-hmm. I was able to stay out of bed all day. Now, it took a couple of years for my body to strengthen. And I'm not going to say those products were the only thing I did. I, right. However, because I had more capability, more ability, more strength, yeah. what it allowed me to do was go to school. So online, mm-hmm. I went to school to become a certified natural therapy coach. And through that, I learned and I met people and did things. So this was very much in harmony with that. Mm-hmm. and. I'm going to say that's part of how I grew my team so quickly back then is two things. One, people who knew me and could see the difference. And two, people who were looking for education because that was 17 years was prior Mm -hmm. to social media acceptance of network marketing. Right. Oh, yeah. No. And, you know, again, the reason I brought that as the Thing that can, that jumped out at me is because I'm always looking in someone's story for what is a possible nugget that one of the badass crew can pull out, right? And understand for their own business that maybe they knew already, but they weren't focusing on, right? So in this case, it's the the story of the outcome, right? And how powerful. And you just put the explan you just underlined it, highlighted it, exclamation point, if we were if we were writing this down, right? On that, which is you people saw your transformation and went, what happened? How'd you do that? And yes, you know, and you kept your promise to God <laughs> to yes. share. I- right. Because that is incredibly powerful. For people, And I, I want them to understand because so many times people hold back and the conversations I have with people in direct sales, network marketing and MLM is they hold back because they don't want to sell. But if they just freaking share their story, <laughs> well, you know, it's not yeah, selling. In our previous interview, we talked about, and I do right. have reason, you know, ways in the book, since you mentioned the book, exactly yeah. how to construct your story. That would be a reason to get the book, if I may say so, because it is exactly how to construct your story so that the focus is on the audience and not on the product. Mm-hmm. 
Exactly. Because then people, you want to drive the curiosity, Mm -hmm. right? Because the reason most people don't like selling and, and why so many, I mean, the last time I checked the the statistics in direct sales and network marketing, it was still 90% of people who come into the industry are out of it in five years or less. And that number has remained very consistent since I started That's... coaching in 2017, right? And it's because a lot of people are afraid to sell. And if they would just freaking share their story you're not selling that's just sharing a story it's just like oh there's so many things that can be tied to but you know if people pull out nothing else from this conversation because the next place i want to go is okay so how how did you build how did you grow how did like all of that but Mm -hmm. just starting with that piece right there is share your story right just it's, that's it. It's there's the person and know who would care about hearing that story. See, we don't put the story everywhere and we don't build. We just don't drop that story everywhere. Right. We first, we're making sure we're making friends with people. And it's mm-hmm. so much easier now. Like at the time when I started, I oh I had to work within my own geographic area. Or drive to another city and spend some time there or fly to another city. I'm not that old, but so social media is not that old either. And there was a time nobody wanted to hear about network marketing products on social media. It was considered bad stuff. If you had to get on social media to talk about your stuff, it must be a scam. I mean, that's what I remember. Oh, yeah. So. I was limited to a geographic area, which meant I was going to meetups all the time. I was going to business places and sharing my message in large groups of people, knowing only a few people in that audience were ever going to care about my story, right? Versus social media makes it so easy to find people who are looking for information to solve a problem. They're not looking for a product. They're looking for information to solve a problem they have. And when you know how to find those places where they're looking, it is really easy to serve and make suggestions. And that's all I do. People say, just make suggestions. Yeah, except you have to make a suggestion to somebody who's prepared to hear it. Yeah. And is likely to say yes. Okay. Like, so... (laughs) Since you and I last talked, when a, an interesting thing occurred and I, I met an energy coach who has helped me to open up and be able to feel energies. OK, so it's so interesting because since that happened, now I can feel when the audience just had an aha moment. OK, and I just felt that when you said it. Now, obviously, You and I are sitting here recording this. Nobody's listening right now. But the great thing about energy is it is not found by time or space. And so there were a ton of people who just had an aha moment of, oh, that's what I'm missing in my business is what you just said, which is find where those people who have that problem, where are they hanging out? Where are they looking for solutions? And are they open? to suggestion and ready to say yes. Like literally my solar plex is just like, Ah. bam. Oh, holy crap. Okay. And I'm so so loving that that you brought the energy in, (laughs) but that's, that's exactly it. And that's really the phrase that people are like, well, what's the script? There's no script. You start having a conversation. And then the, the, the question is based upon the fact that you're struggling with that, are you open to a suggestion? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> that would be what you say. There's the script. Uh-huh. Would you be open to a suggestion on right. how to solve that? And I, I want to point out to people the the specific wording that you did use. Are you open to hearing a suggestion to solving your problem, right? Are you open to solving this, right? It's not, do you want to solve it? That's a yes or no. 
right? Well, so is, are you open to? So but is, are you open? Right. But there's a different psychology behind that, which is yes. how many people want to be closed minded? I don't think anybody wants to be viewed as closed minded. And if they've been complaining about the problem mm -hmm. to you and you ask, are you open to hearing a suggestion? I might have the solution for you. Are you open to hearing about it? Or I might have a solution for you, not the, but a solution, a possible, right? Those words are so important for people to pick up on because that allows them to, like you said, be ready to say yes, right? Because you're not selling, you're suggesting, suggesting, sorry. <laughs> well, I'm going to say, I, I, I have no problem with the word selling. What I'm with right. you is that it starts with a suggestion. Yeah. But also what my role is as a network marketer, Jenny, I see mm -hmm. is to point to where they can buy it. It's not my store. Like, it's like, it's not my store. Yes. I buy from the store. Yeah. And I found the solution to your same problem. Do you want me? It's like, I found these shoes at Target. Do you want me to tell you which Target I got them at? Yes. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing. So when someone, if I put that in my brain, then the all the bugaboos around the word selling go away. And I say to somebody, yes, are you open to hearing what solution I found? Because it might help you too. And when they say yes, I'll say, okay, so this is what it did for me. And here's where I buy it. Here's where I buy it. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as when we, you know, go, oh, I got it on Amazon or, oh, I got it exactly. at Best Buy or, oh, I got it at, you know. Oh, y'all, this is this is going to change so many businesses right now. I'm so excited about this. Okay, so with this, so my brain now is going to the next step of this in, in direct sales and network marketing, which is, okay, so now, now we have the words for bringing in customers. And I, I worded it that way very particularly, right? Because I yes. don't have a thing around selling. I'm totally cool with selling because selling means I, I help solve a problem, right? That's right? But now we have the words that help bring in customers. How did you then build teams, right? Because you mm -hmm. people do not stay in network marketing for over a decade, almost two decades without team building, whether accidentally or on purpose. <laughs> so, on purpose. Oh, yeah. well, right. Well, I, I knew for yeah. you yeah. it was but on I, purpose. Yes, you're, you're right. But uh -huh. there are some people who accidentally <laughs> bring people on. They don't know how they did it. They don't know how they onboarded them. But OK. But how did you then transition to team building in in your business? Well, first, I had to make mistakes. So I learned. <laughs> so with that first company, I made a lot of mistakes by once they showed excitement going, I can show you how to make money from it. OK, now everybody is like, really, truly? Who doesn't want more money? So, of course, everybody said yes. And then I would show them what I did, all the things that I did, all the education I got, blah, 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 blah. And they all went, who's got time for that? Right? Mm -hmm. So even if they said yes and bought in to begin with, after a certain amount of time, I promise you, most who were not in a position like I was, and I didn't have children at home, I didn't have ill parents. I had a husband who was working and doing and left me alone to do my thing. Those were the only business builders I had left. Now, most of the other folks continue right. to be customers. But like I said, I only have a few business builders over there. Right. Yeah. And yes, I am in an opportunity as well that allows me to all both opportunities allow me to be in other opportunities as long as I'm not promoting them both at the same time, which is why you will not know what. I'm doing here. Totally fair. <laughs> the new one is completely, and it's been in eight weeks. I have very few customers. They're all the rest business builders because I said, here's where you can buy it. And I'm perfectly happy with them just buying it. Mm hmm. But, and then you have the meeting of a company that provides a great compensation package, great products, lots of enthusiasm. I bring that. So what I do when I'm bringing somebody on is 
what do you want to do with this organization? Do you want to just buy it for yourself? Mm-hmm. They're like, for now, for most people will say for now, yes. Yeah. Well, they love it. They wind up coming to me and saying, can I sell this? Do you think I could sell this? <laughs> okay. And I'll say, well, you know, we've got training programs. Here's where you would go. If you're really interested, get on these calls. So I'm not doing one-to-one pushing and promising anybody anymore. They get to show up or not show up. Mm. If they want the training to be a business builder, they'll partake of it. And yes, I'm there to encourage, cheer them on. But again, I'm pointing now and I do some of the training group training myself. Right. I've got a great team because I made it. Sh- I'm, I researched before I jumped all in. I'm not doing the heavy lifting by myself anymore. It is fully community or everything that we've heard community supposed to be, yeah. including a company that says you don't want to be a business builder. No worries. We've got things for you too as a customer. So people are free to have the choice. And isn't it interesting that now I have far more business builders Mm -hmm. than I do customers. Okay. And all those business builders are purchasing. Right. Right. Yeah. I, and this is the kind of thing I've been advocating for in, in terms of ways to grow teams through personal and then also through teaching your team to duplicate because um, one of the things, you know, I've been teaching this and, and working with my own coaching clients for years on this type of business building. But then when I was introduced to one particular book and we talked of, and in that book, they talk about what true duplication is, right? True duplication mm-hmm. is not, I put someone else in the business and so now I'm duplicated. No, 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 no. You haven't truly duplicated until you've brought someone in, trained them to bring someone in that has then trained someone to bring someone in. Then you've duplicated yourself because you've brought people in who know the full process to not just sell, but how to do the team building portion. That's true duplication. If people, if someone isn't doing what you're doing, you're not duplicated. Yeah, you're not duplicated. And the other is we can't want it more. We've heard this a thousand. I did not make this up clearly. We cannot want it more for somebody Mm -hmm. then they want it for themselves. So again, every human being has different situations, different priorities, and have a different level of selling experience Mm -hmm. going into it. And we must, as leaders, I say, recognize each of those differences. So when the perks, I didn't in the beginning. I was like, okay, if you want to be like the me, then yeah. be like me. Yeah. Okay. Thus, the book "Selling from Your Comfort Zone" is over these years. I have come to my own training of meaning. I've gone to mentors to help me figure out where I was missing the boat. I've checked into, you go to an energy healer. Mm-hmm. I've also gone to folks, you know, positive mental mindset. I've gone to psychologist about human behavior. Mm-hmm. And I have come to embrace that every human being is going to approach the same situation from their own set of experiences. And the other is, I will never, ever, and this is true. I will always say, don't say never. But I will not ever agree to hold somebody accountable. Because it is virtually impossible. Mm. They choose to be self-accountable. Great. It is not my job as a leader to hold somebody accountable. No, that's my job as a coach. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and I think that's, a, that's an incredibly important distinction, though, right? Is because this was something I learned from my own mentor, because you talked about going and getting your own training, right? So yep. I, yes, I was a top leader in my organization. And I still went to trainings with my leader, Yeah, right? That's a really important thing that I want people to understand is, is your leader going to trainings with their leader? Mm -hmm. Are are they continuing to build and grow themselves? And if you expect your team to do the same, are you doing those things, right? But then on the accountability side, one of the things that I learned from my mentor when I was with the company that I was with back in the day, was 
And I loved the way she worded it. And I know I've said it before on the podcast, but I'm going to say it again in case people didn't hear that those episodes where I addressed it was as your leader, I am I want you to think of me as a mirror. When you're in front of me, I see you and you see me and we work together. But if you step back, I'm not chasing you. Right. Mirrors don't chase. You have to if you want to see something, you go to the mirror. Right. So if you want to see things, if you want to learn, if you want to be trained, if you want to do all that, like come to me, I will provide the opportunities for you to know where I am. Right. But I'm not going right. to chase you down because, yeah, I was having those same struggles myself of. God, I can't get my team to do this or I, you know, I'm having trouble with this. And when she shared that idea with me, I was able to let all that go and just be like, y'all, I'm here. Show yeah. up or don't show up. But I'm going to run my business with you or without you. <laughs> and you can come along key. for the ride. <laughs> right. To me, when you bring up du duplication, for me, it's the same as demonstration. I have to be doing the do, not sitting back, waiting for other people to do the do for me. Right. OK, I've got a team now. You guys all just build. I did it. You go to. No, I'm in the, tr I'm there every day showing up. If I'm not on someone else's, like a sponsor's call, mm -hmm. okay, I'm watching the replay. Yep. So I'm not just telling my team, go to this training. Yep. I'm saying, this is why this training is important. And if I, if you don't see me there, I'll be watching the replay. And then afterwards, here's what I got from the training. Mm -hmm. What did you get? Yeah. And yes, I am doing my own incentives and my own bonuses on top of it because of that. But I am in it to win it personally. Yes. I'm not relying on them, even though that's, and I'm going to say that's the myth of network marketing is the residuals. I'm a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. When I'm ready to retire, yeah, if ever, before I die. <laughs> OK, uh -huh. then I'll figure out what I'm going to do with my business after that. In the meantime, I'm working my business. Absolutely. Oh, y'all. OK, there have been so many nuggets. OK, I want you to make sure you go to this episode and I don't know what what app you're using right now, y'all, but favorite this episode, download it. And you need to be listening to this episode like every day. <laughs> <laughs> for like the next week, because I'm telling you, based on how many times y'all's mind got blown and I felt it every time, because thank you, Shiraz Babu, I felt it every time. Your mind was still processing what you just heard and you probably missed the next like, holy shit moment, guys. So I want you <laughs> to go back and listen to this again. And if you have a team, you are not doing your team a favor. If you don't share this, incentivize them to listen to this episode for because they are going to have aha moments because I felt it. I felt your team have an aha moment in this episode. So, Stacy, I could talk to you forever, but I know you and I both have other things to do. And so does the listener. And there has been so much here that I want them to chew on, digest, go back and listen to again and again. But after listening to this, if they want to reach out to you to learn more about you, more about the book, because, of course, you have Selling uh, selling from Your Comfort Zone, which is a book we've talked about before. I'm going to have my show notes writer put the link to the previous episode in the show notes so that way they can go listen to that and then maybe go get the book. But if they were to reach out to you, what's the best way for a badass crew member to to connect with you? Well, I appreciate that. Really quickly, I'm going to say I loved your mirror metaphor. I'm taking, I always talk about the lighthouse. I love the met mirror metaphor. So everyone make sure you, if you missed that one, because it went <laughs> by fast, listen to the mirror metaphor. Uh, okay. Stacy, S-T-A-C-E-Y, Anne, A-N-N-H-A-L-L, stacyannhall.com. All my social media links are there. If you click on courses, there's a few freebies there, including my ridiculously simple way to create sales satisfaction and success for free. And that's the best way. You can get to me right through that website, stacyannhall.com. Oh my gosh. Okay, so my show notes writer is also gonna put that in the show notes so that way people can just click the link, 
You don't have to worry about spelling it right. It's going to be right there because y'all just... And if you don't know how to get to the show notes, because maybe this is the first time you've ever listened, or maybe you are a badass crew member and you've just never accessed the, the show notes, all you have to do is grab your phone as long as you're not driving, click on today's episode, scroll underneath Stacey's picture, and you'll see the show notes or the episode notes right there. Click on the link, connect with Stacy, or go listen to the episode about selling from your comfort zone so you can learn more about how to do that more comfortably. But still, because I'm telling you right now, yes, you're selling from your comfort zone. There's still going to be things that you might feel uncomfortable with, but it's not as bad as you think. I promise. Stacy, thank you so much for being here again. You are phenomenal. And I am so excited to have gotten to speak with you again. They say it takes one to know one. Oh. And this time it is true. And I just love that we can talk about selling, energy, mirrors, lighthouses, all of it, and how simple it is to simply suggest. Oh. <laughs> another like another full body goosebumps there, guys. So Stacy, you're awesome. You're amazing. Thank you. And I know we're gonna have to have you back and talk again very soon. Badass crew, you know how this goes. Stay tuned because there's another badass episode on its way. Thanks for listening to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Why are you waiting to go to badassdirectsalesmastery.com? Don't make the dom get her whip. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to share it with another rock star that you know in direct sales after you subscribe to the podcast so you won't miss any future episodes. You can also check out the show notes for links and any contact information mentioned in today's episode. We'll see you next time.